This video pertains to a command line utility to aid you in creating migrations for SQLize. SQLize is a uh, object relational mapper that allows you to map model instances to MySQL, MariaDB, SQLite, and Postgres. Now, if you're looking for a migration tool that you can use in production, you should stop right now and you should go and install uh, SQLize-CLI. That's NPM space install space SQLize-CLI. And the reason that is is because this, mod this module is really more of a preview, kind of proof of concept kind of deal. And the video is also going to be geared more towards um, you know, the community and authors within SQLize so that we can maybe add some of these features that um, we're getting some feedback that seem to be desired. So you'll be bored to death. <laughs> so if you're just looking for a migration tool, you should stop right now. Go grab that. And uh, once this gets a little bit further along, maybe it'll be something viable. So let's uh, take a look and see what the module actually does. To install would be nothing more than npm install sqlize cmd-g. You want to install it globally. That will make the command available everywhere. The command that it creates is sqcmd, and just short for sqlize command. Uh, the first thing you would want to do in a project is uh, navigate to the project, then do init. What that will do is in that project it will create an sqcmd.json file, which is all your configuration. Uh, it will also create a models folder, migrations folder, uh, and seeds folder. In my case, when you watch this video, instead of doing sqcmd, which is the normal command, you're going to see me type a different command just know that that command is really the same thing. Uh, SQLize uh, command allows you to, it has an API, so it allows you to do things programmatically, or in my case, I have another framework that I'm using <clears throat> that I've just wrapped into it so I can type the same name. That's all that it is. So uh, moving along, so let's create a model. And let's call it my model. You can add properties to that model. Uh, so add a model. Uh, let's do first name, last name, and we can add a few uh, properties or excuse me attributes. Let's do email and we'll say uh, type equals string. That string will get capitalized. Each time you uh, use a colon that means that it's a new attribute for that property. So we could do something like an allow null, you know, whoops, equals false. Okay, something of that nature. You can do that with a handful of properties or whatever. Uh, just to get yourself going. So we'll hit enter and we'll take a look at that model. My model, here it is. Sure enough, it created everything we need to define a SQLized model. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I don't really need it. And I've got already a couple models stubbed out, a user and a post model. Uh, the user model has a relationship to post. Post has uh, a parent or belongs to user. So let's add a migration. We'll hit enter here. And you get this nice little report. It tells you which models were touched. And it tells you the total number processed and the total number touched or there was changes that detected modifications. So if we look in our migrations folder, and we see it did exactly that. It knew that we have not created these tables before that they did not exist. Um, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. So we create the post table, we create the user table, and it also adds our down methods to drop them uh, if we need to undo. So the way that works is in our SQLize meta, uh, which is the table that the migrations create, um, you normally would just have the ID from and to, and the from and to are just timestamps so it can kind of keep straight with you know what's been done, undone, and so on. The new field, just the data field, is a blob that stores a snapshot of the current state of your models. Well, in this case, we didn't have anything done yet. We had no migration, so it knew that those models needed to be created, uh, number one. Um, but even if it had uh, other models already created, it would still know to create them because those models do not exist in the current snapshot. So let's go ahead and, and show how that might uh, how that might work um, by uh, running a migration. So now what we'll do is migrate. Uh, but let's look at uh, the SQL database. Let's refresh this. Uh, 
and sure enough we have a post and user table and if we look in here in the columns we have the uh, foreign key uh, for the user ID if we go into our meta and we call that query real quick we see that we have the from to and we have the blob data again the snapshot of the current state of the models for lack of a better term now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a change to user and we're going to um, do email and if you notice it says types instead of data types that's just me because I don't like typing data types <laughs> that's the only reason uh, short as possible for me alright so we've made that change we're gonna add uh, a new migration and sure enough we see that the only model that was touched is user we can see how many was processed and what have you if we uh, go in and look at our new migration we see that it knows that on the down it needs to remove that column because it's new and on the up it needs to add the column and the type that it's going to be so now we can migrate and sure enough that's done if we check our table we see we have two migrations now and uh, the next thing we might want to do is we might want to seed some data and again because an API is exposed you can do some of this stuff programmatically which makes it really handy uh, and that's what we typically are, are, are doing um, but this is a great little feature and what it does is it uses the chance utility you probably have seen it or, or heard of it before uh, the chance utility and what we're talking here I'll just pull it up um, is really a cool little library and what it does is it allows you to uh, generate things automatically uh, you can just go to uh, chancejs.com so you can generate you know all types of uh, you know text and a person's age birthday you know you see the stuff here um, you know emails you can specify a certain date so you can get you know some dummy data in there uh, to get your database up and going or you may just need to seed in some static uh, you know things for drop down lists or something of that nature and that's what it's for so what we do is we pass that into the seed so let's take a look at a, a seed and so we see, you see we pass in the database we pass in the data types again and we pass in uh, a new instance or an instance of chance so that enables us to grab the the current models okay and in this case we want the user model that's what we're going to seed and we just defined a little generator guy here and we give it a count we tell it to loop through and generate that many users and when we're ready to go we say model uh, because again we define the model up here um, I like to keep names generic so in case I copy and paste things it's just this I have to change uh, so model bulk create models uh, and we'll go ahead and run that oh you know what it's users and it seeded one seed now that doesn't mean how many records that means that it seeded it did one it processed one seed file so if we go into our database now we can look at the users and sure enough we have those 10 dummy users uh, dummy data created uh, and that's what the SQLize-CMD tool does there's lots more to cover with it lots of different things we're kinda of tossing up in the air as to do or not do um, some things to do with how how models are generated or maybe adding some things to the core to uh, limit the need to do so much string manipulation but we'll get back to you uh, on that soon